Hello, my name is Charlotte Murphy and I'm a senior consultant and teacher trainer for Oxford University Press. This video is going to show you how you can use our classroom presentation tools to deliver distant or online lessons and how it's a great resource for synchronous learning. In order to use classroom presentation tools, you need to have an account on Oxford Learners Bookshelf. Registration is free, you simply go to oxfordlearnersbookshelf.com. I'm now going to bring up my Oxford Learners Bookshelf account and I'm going to show you the lesson that I'm going to be teaching using a classroom presentation tool. So, I'm going to sign into my Oxford Learners Bookshelf. And once it's loaded, you'll be able to see the different ebooks and classroom presentation tools that I have available on my bookshelf. The lesson I'm going to be teaching today is English File Elementary, taken from the fourth edition. And I'm going to be teaching Unit 2A. So using my menu tool, I'm going to select Unit 2A. It's worth mentioning now that I'm using Zoom to share my lesson, but you can use any screen sharing platform to share your class and presentation tool with your students. And all of the tools that we're going to be looking at across the top here are a feature of our Oxford Learners bookshelf. So again, any screen sharing platform that you're using, you will have access to these tools because they are part of our Oxford Learners bookshelf. Okay, so Unit 2A is looking at how tidy or untidy you are. And as you can see, we've got two images here. We've got image A of a tidy room and image B of an untidy room. I'm going to ask my students to type into the chat box if they are A, tidy, or B, untidy. If you've got a small class, you might get them to unmute their microphones at this point and verbally tell you whether they are a tidy or untidy person. This can be a really good activity for engaging your learners. For the next part of the task, we're going to have a look at the next page. So I'm going to click on my page options and select two page. And the task is a vocabulary task, so I'm going to zoom in clicking on my zoom in button so I can see what it is we need to do. So we've looked at the photos of the two rooms and now I'm going to get my students to name what the objects are. So I'm going to focus on the first picture and I'm going to click on my focus button. This allows me to select different images or tasks on my page that I want to bring up in full. So if I click on this picture this is now the main focus. And in the chat box, I'm going to ask my students to type what they think the names of these objects are. After I've looked at picture one, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to select picture two because my focus is still on. And again, I'll get my students in the chat box to type what they think the names of these objects are. After this, if I feel like my students need further vocabulary practice, I can click here, page 151, Vocabulary Bank. This will take me straight to the back of the book um, where we can find extra vocabulary practice. When I'm finished with this section, I can click on this arrow back page, which will take me straight back to where we were before. Okay, so now we're going to move on and we're going to have a look at the answers. By doing this, we can select the marking options. And we've got two options here. For this task, I'm going to show the answers to my students. By clicking this, it's brought up an icon next to the task. And here it's revealing the answers to the activity that I've just done with my students. You might find that some of these answers bring up different um, responses from your learners. For example, number 10, some students might have said magazine instead of newspaper. 
again you could get your students here to type or speak using their microphones what's the difference between a magazine or a newspaper just to get further engagement and interaction from your learners if we have a look at the next task we can see that here it calls for answers to be typed straight into the classroom presentation tool so if I type in my answer here, or I type in the answer that a student's given me, I can now see my marking options again at the top here. So now I'm going to click on this option. And it's going to give me a green tick for the answers that I got correct. And it's going to give me a red cross for the ones that I got incorrect. If your students are using an ebook, they will also have these same tools. And this is really great if you want students to do some self study and they're then able to see which answers they got correct, which ones they didn't get correct. And maybe that this is something that you can address in your next online lesson with them. If I have a look at the next task, this involves listening. A tip here, if you are delivering your lesson and you have earphones in, when you press play, your students might not hear this because you are blocking the sound coming out of your laptop and it's not able to go into the microphone. So if you have got earphones in, just unplug them for this section of the lesson. If I click play. 2.3. Snake, S books, lamps. The students should be able to hear what I am playing off of my classroom presentation tool. Again, if your students have got the ebook version of this, they'll be able to also access the listening. And this is again great for self study or asynchronous learning if they want to study in their own time. And then when you uh, have your online lesson again, you can revisit this section, see if there are any areas that they struggled with or any questions that they may have. Looking at the other tools, we've got a pen tool up here and we've got a highlighter tool up here. These are great if you want to um, highlight certain sections that you want to work on with your students. Maybe if they're a little bit lost, um, you're not there in a physical classroom with them to point at the board and show them where we're up to. So instead you can use your pen or your highlighter tools um, to show them where you want them to be focused. At the end of your lesson, you'll probably find that you'll have a few marks on your page and you'll have some answers here. To get rid of these, you simply click on the remove all. And then where we go to our marking options, we delete our answers. So if you're going to be delivering this lesson again, it's quite good to clear your answers and your uh, markings at the end so that they're not there for when you have your next lesson. We're going to be putting more videos up on our website. Um, so if you go to uh, oup.com forward slash ELT forward slash learn at home, you'll see more videos on how you can use classroom presentation tools and how you can use ebooks to help you with your distance learning. I hope that this video was useful uh, and it provided a good overview um, for synchronous teaching and it showed you how our materials uh, can be used and accessed um, by you and by your students too. And I hope that you are able to uh, attend any future um, webinars that we do to support our teachers. Um, but in the meantime, please visit the website below and uh, good luck.